Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. Today I'm talking, well, this month really, I'm talking all about visibility. And I'm talking about the poisonous stories and the poisonous lies that we tell ourselves, the things that go through our mind that kind of chirp away at our brain when we want to grow our business. And in order to grow, we must be seen. It is not negotiable. We have to be seen by the marketplace. But I know from my work that one of the stories that really holds women back is that we eventually have to talk about pricing and money, worthiness, and our value. And if people find us, we're going to eventually have to tell them how much we cost, right? And how much value we can bring to them. So what's a great way to never, ever have to have that conversation? Well, it's to never be seen. It's to never have that awful conversation by staying invisible. And then we don't have to talk about our offers and our products and our services. So today I have invited expert Jerrica Glasper to speak to you. I'm so glad she's here. She's an expert who can help you identify your deeply rooted unconscious beliefs, your habits, your emotions around money and worthiness and value, those things that you have deep inside of you that she can help you dislodge and get unstuck from so that you can stop playing small in your business. So Jerrica, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. Yes, Jen Liddy, thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me on to speak to your tribe. And I'm so excited to dive into this topic because it is one that I feel a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with, especially with wanting to build an online business and having to be visible, being on camera, sharing audio, talking about when it comes to asking for the sale, you know, securing the bag, as they say, mm-hmm. you know, people struggle with that. So I'm excited to dive into the topic today. Well, I'm glad to have an expert because I talk about this stuff with my audience all the time, but I always love to bring an expert in because I, I think people get sick of hearing my voice. So I'm glad you're here. Can you tell us, give me a sense of who you work with and what kind of work you do with people? Yes. Yeah, so I am a certified belief clearing practitioner. So AKA a mindset coach. And I'm also a life and business manifestation coach. So my work is with conscious spiritual women entrepreneurs. I say a few powerhouse men because I have men that reach out to me as well. And also personal development seekers that are wanting to go to another level in their life. Either they're going through a spiritual awakening or they have a business that they want to manifest success in. And so there's a scotoma, your blind spot. They need someone to look and say, hey, what are my blind spots? I've been dealing with these beliefs and sometimes we just can't see them. So we need a coach to hold that mirror up and say, Hey, That's let's right. challenge this belief. Let's challenge this habit. And let's, let's choose something different. I love this word, katoma. I've never heard that word before. Can you talk a little bit more about what that is? Yes. Uh, so a scotoma is a your scotoma. blind spot. Okay. So it's just like, you know, driving in your car and you you're getting ready to get over and you don't realize there's a whole truck right there. And you're like, oh, I didn't see that. I looked over there, but I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And so a coach helps you see your blind spots. And so I help clients see the blind spots. Sometimes we just need someone that can look at where we are and say, hey, you know what? This, 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 let's work on it. Let's tweak it. Let's come up with a different self-concept and different beliefs. And then that's that makes the world of difference when it comes to moving forward. I bet that when... We all have blind spots, but I think that you really have to be ready for somebody to show you your blind spots to do the kind of work that I know you do with people. So you really have to attract the right kind of people, right? Yes, absolutely. I think the fact that when you become aware that you want to get coaching or when you perk up in your own mindset, or oh, I feel like Sometimes the work and the transformation can happen even before you get to the coach because you've set an intention to start seeking out that type of work and that type of healing. And so I I often find that people might book a call with me and they're like, 
hey, I want to work on this. And then before the call, they're like, oh my goodness, I had this huge breakthrough. And so it's that intention that you said subconsciously that, hey, I need to work on this. It's coming up for a reason. I need to work on it. And then you reach out to me and it's like, hey, we're already setting things in motion. We're Mm -hmm. getting alignment. So the transformation is going to happen. Just taking that decision and making that small action of making the, the call with you is often a thing that puts people into motion. Yes. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today, which is because I know there's so much mindset junk around everything. There's blind spots around eating and drinking and shopping and all of the stuff, right? But we are here today to talk about what we need to learn about our money blind spots and our worthiness blind spots. Can you talk a little bit about the foundations of those blocks? Yes. So with the money blocks, things that come up with money blocks, oftentimes it comes from childhood. Now you hear a lot of psychologists say this, a lot of coaches, but it really is because we pick up things that we see from our parents, that we see from friends, that we see from society. And we grow up and we just, we don't realize just like a computer or like our phone. Sometimes we have all these programs running on our phone, these apps that are open that are draining the battery and we don't know it. They're running in the background. And so it's sometimes we have to take a look at those programs and say, okay, delete, 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 delete. So Clearing your money blocks is really just looking at your emotion. So looking at the emotion that you have when you pay a bill or when you ask for the sale or when you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh my God, the bill's so high. So it's the emotion. So it's it's an event. It's ABC. The model is ABC. So there's an, there's an, an actual event that happens. There's a belief mm-hmm. that causes an emotion. So a lot of people are like, oh, this happened and I have this emotion. Well, behind that emotion is a belief. And so a good litmus test to see, hey, I have this emotion, always go back to there has to be a belief behind it. And so I wanted to give an example that came up for me when we talk about this. I remember being in like in my 20s. Say you have $500 in your bank account when you're in your 20s. So that's the activating event, right? That's the A. And then the belief behind that when you're like in your 20s, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I have $500 in my bank account, right? And then what you might do, the action you might take would be to spend it or you might feel excited or feel hopeful or whatever, right? Yes. But then you get into maybe your 30s or your 40s and $500, you know, is not going to get you very far. You have a house and you have insurance and you have children and groceries. And so $500 isn't going to cut it anymore. And so that very same activating event, the belief might have shifted inside of you. Like that's not enough. That's, there's a lack there. Right. And then you might have a feeling of panic or despair or like, you know, I'm not enough. I, what am I doing wrong? Kind of thing. So the very same activating event that might not change, but it's really like, might be the, the belief inside of you has a whole effect on your feelings. Is that a good example for what you're saying? Yes. Yes. I love that. And I, I recently did a money course. It was called, um, activate your money attraction in the very first thing that we talked about was clearing money beliefs and revising memories mm-hmm. of the past where maybe you walked into a store with your mom and she's like, no, we can't afford that. Oh or, you know, you want to be on the cheerleading team. And she's like, I don't have money for that. So we actually, there's a technique in, in um, belief clearing called revision. Okay. And it's where you go back to the memory and you revise what happened to what your most ideal is. That mom said, yes, I have the money, sign up, you're going to shine, you see yourself being a cheerleader at the top of the pyramid, and you completely rewrite that memory out, and you put something more empowering in its place. And the same thing with money. So that's that's super fun. I love that. Yes. I have a million of those memories from my childhood. Rewrite them. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Can we talk a little bit about some of the misinformation or the myths that are out there around the idea of manifesting and abundance and worthiness? Yes, yes. So there is a quote that I wanted to share okay. around that. It said, it's from James Allen and it says, the outer conditions of a person's life will always be found to reflect their inner beliefs. And so a lot of times we think that everything is outside of us, it's external, that happened, it's not because of me or this happened and it's out of my control. But a lot of the stuff has to do what, what we teach in manifesting. It all starts within you. It all starts with your self-concept. Self-concept leads everything. And so who I believe myself to be is going to show up in 
my interactions with the world, with people, places, and things. And so another thing around visibility is changing your self-concept and changing who you believe yourself to be. So if you're wanting to be an impactful leader, you want to, you have a tribe that you want to leave, you have your money goals, who are you as this woman who is leading a multiple six-figure business? What does she do on a day-to-day basis? How does she feel? How does she feel about herself? How does she feel about our people, like get into that vibe and stay there, like embody that vibe and then look at yourself and say, okay, am I in that vibe now? If you're not, start operating from that place. So the myth is that people think things happen to them and that they're a, like a victim of what happens to them. That's the myth that people are walking around with. Yes. From manifesting. So if you're asking about manifesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's like things are happening to me Mm -hmm. and in manifesting, a lot of it is that things are happening because of you, because of your beliefs, because of your self-concept about yourself, the world, others, you're projecting that out and the world is just going to be a a mirror. The world is you pushed out. (laughs) Now, this is a concept that I hear a lot and it's kind of a complex concept. So how do you get people on board with this? Because you're really talking about helping them create a completely new identity in order to manifest the abundance and understand their worthiness. How do you do this work? It's really challenging, I imagine. Yeah, so there are techniques that you can do, especially if you're in a in a disempowering place. Like we're not always at our best. Let's just be honest. Some days we wake up and we're just like, not today, okay? Not, not today. today. Just nobody don't know. Maybe maybe not this week. (laughs) Yeah, the whole (laughs) week. Okay. And it's like, how do you shift out of that? And one of the things that I teach, number one, is that another really powerful uh, technique or tool to clear those beliefs and shift your mood is music. Mm -hmm. And so in the money course that I taught, I had the ladies in there say, okay, pick a song that embodies the state the feeling that you want to feel as the woman, right? As this empowered leader, as this woman making multiple six figures and giving to charities, like, who is she? Like, how does she feel? And then what's her theme song? So mm-hmm. when you're having one of those days, it's like, okay, go turn on your song so you can shift into your your vibe. So you can, okay, let's put on the music. Let's, because music, and, and make sure it's a positive song with good lyrics, but music goes straight to your subconscious and it's really a really good mood shifter. So, you know, talking about music going straight to your subconscious, have you seen, this is completely off topic, but I think it's interesting when you're talking about music, people with Alzheimer's or dementia, when they are played music, like from a long time ago, they just come to and they just perk right up. So that is something I never thought about as a tool to help us embody the identity of who we want to be or who we want to become, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's such a cool tool. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. I have a whole, I have like 15 songs that I share with the ladies, but they're all around money, money, yeah, money yeah. And manifesting. So I will share that list with you. You can send it out to your, your tribe, your listeners. And I love that. All your money songs are right there. Just That's play, amazing. Just play I never around. thought of that as a tool. That's fantastic. Okay, let's talk about what happens when somebody has an identity that they're like, I don't attract money, money, money hates me. Like they have like that bad money mindset that keeps them from wanting to be seen, keeps them from prosperity. What is your experience? Because I know that you work with a lot of different kinds of women. With women entrepreneurs, when they have to talk about pricing, what do you see happening out there? When it comes to pricing, there's a lot of undercharging, a lot of under earning. And one of the things that I've seen is that it it really goes back to the the feeling of worthiness. And so a lot of times it's the trauma that we've been through. It's the patriarchal society that men are somehow better than women, which we know is not true. It's a lot of beliefs that are buried. And so what I always go to is like, what do you want? Like, what do I, what do I want? If I want to have multiple properties, I want to pay for my child's college. I would like if I have all of these things, if or if if I have all of these goals and this is what I want, that's my end. Then am I living? Am I operating in that that end? Whenever I'm having the sales call, like I have these goals. This is the woman that I see myself as, who I want to be, and it's bringing that future into the now and just embodying that. 
it's easier said than done. Oh yeah. 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 I agree. <laughs> so, you know, mirror work is always good looking into your eyes and a lot of people, you know, brush your teeth, wash your face. And sometimes they never even glance at themselves in the mirror. And it's just taking a couple minutes and just looking in your eyes and saying, you know, I love you. You're beautiful. You got this. You're worthy. Right. Just speak into yourself, speaking life into yourself and realizing that as a human being that exists, that you are worthy. The fact that you are here, like I hear people I've heard in an interview, a guy said, well, look at, think about all the sperm you beat out to get to the (laughs) egg, right? (laughs) You're a champion already. You won, but no, seriously, like the fact that you exist, that God created you, that you're here, you are here for a purpose and just finding a spiritual practice, yoga, meditation, prayer, something that helps you with that internal worthiness. That's, it really is, it's not going to be the shoes. It's not going to be the spa day. It's not going to be the freaking bag. It's not going to be the new car, the new Mercedes. It's really going to be that internal work just to say, I don't have to do anything. I am worthy because I am here. (laughs) I a hundred percent agree. I think these concepts are so deep and so hard for people to understand because they are living with the garbage in their mind for so long. So I think the more that people hear this message, and that's why I'm so grateful that you're talking about it because women especially need to hear this message. I know that men need this message too. I know that not every man is walking around feeling hundred percent worthy, but women have this old story that like, I don't deserve to charge people who serve don't deserve to get paid. I'm, I want to be helpful. And so I don't, I don't want to take money. Money is ugly and yucky. And then we have all of these old stories. So one of the things I noticed, I'm curious if you notice this, when a woman is talking about her pricing and she's like maybe in a discovery call or a sales call with somebody, when it's time to talk about pricing, her voice goes up really high. And she kind of says her, her money part, you know, the money part in with a question. And it's like, she just shifted out of her authentic self, like down here to then raise her voice up here. And I, I noticed that's another thing that I think keeps women from being visible because they know that they're not in their authentic self when they get to that part of the call. Do you see that too? Yes. Yes. Even for me, Jessica Riverson, we, yes, we, yes. You worked with Jessica. Yep. Did, did you work with her? Did oh, you yeah. Like who? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we both been there. there. Yes. Yeah. It's a skill. And I heard a sales trainer say that before you get on your sales calls, you should always do your, your call in the mirror mm. to just to see yourself and to hear yourself. Like right. the, the, and he went and taught the world's greatest organizations and their sales teams, how to close deals. And he, and he taught mirror work in corporate America, like That's amazing. Doing, your, doing your presentation to yourself in the mirror before you get on the call and just getting into your high vibe with your music and, mm-hmm. you know, doing your meditation, your breathing, and, and really just knowing that what you're providing is transformation. You're not providing information. It's a transformation oh, yes. and that you are allowing someone else to to transform, right? Mm-hmm. You're allow- you're allowing someone else to say yes to themselves by you saying yes to yourself. So it's a right. two-way street. Yeah. How can you stay invisible and hiding when there are so many people desperate for exactly what you have to offer? Yes. I mm-hmm. want to share a quick story. Well, Please do. I'll make it quick. Anyone hearing this story, this is your story. Take this story and embody this story. I had a vision Uh, One day I was praying, this was maybe like five, six years ago, I was praying in my living room and I just was like overwhelmed with gratitude and I'm crying like, oh, God is so good. You know, bless me with all these things and really got into it. And I had this vision of me standing over one of my friends who was, she was kind of down, like her head was down and she's kind of sad. And I'm standing over her and in the vision, I can't hear what I'm saying, but I'm speaking to her. And she stands, she rises up off the floor, she stands up. And she's smiling and this tree grows from her head. And on the tree, there's this beautiful fruit. It's like red and orange fruit. Like her tree is just flourishing with fruit and she's smiling and she turned and she walks to another woman that was kind of down. And and so when she's talking to this woman, her fruit falls on this woman's head and the woman smiles and her tree grows. Right. And so I call my, and so the whole vision I'm looking like, I was like, oh my God. I talked to her, she talked to her and it, and it just turned into this 
this mighty forest, like a forest grew in front of my eyes of nothing but trees and fruit and like women talking to each other, their fruit was falling. It was like, if, if I could make it a movie, it would be so amazing. Oh my um, God. But I called my dad and I was like, dad, oh my goodness, you know, this vision, I have to tell my friend, like, she had fruit and it fell on someone's head and they were like, okay. And she gave these words and he's like, that's not her vision. That's you. You were the fruit that fell on her in the vision that caused that. And so the same for you, your fruit Mm. has, we're all rooted, we're all connected. And so your fruit has the power to impact one person that can impact thousand. We don't even know infinitely can impact other people's lives. That is so freaking gorgeous. <laughs> and I could see it so clearly. And while you were talking, like, I don't, I, 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 I'm tearing up and I'm getting chills running through me. That's an amazing vision. Yes. And I, mm-hmm. I never knew what to do with it. I was like, okay, what do I do now? I wasn't doing anything at that time. I just, I, and even now I hold that vision and I know it's not my own. Yeah. I know yeah. It's just a mind vision. download, right? Yeah. Yes. That we are one. And so my vision is your vision. Thank and you for sharing that. Yes. Yes. You're wow. welcome. I feel like you could hire an artist to paint that or render it I in some way. It. Oh my God. That would be amazing. Yes. Um, what is something that you think most women don't know when it comes to their own worthiness blocks or their own money blocks? Like what is something they're just like clueless about? It's that you should not tie your self-esteem and your self-worth to accomplishments, to achievements. Mm-hmm. That's the big one. Like I'm only worthy if I get these five clients this month, I'm only worthy after I get these five certifications, I'm only worthy if I hit this income goal and we should not tie self-worth into accomplishments. Yes, we want to celebrate them. Absolutely. But your self-worth does not diminish because your accomplishments are not there. They don't match. Well, that goes right back to what you said at the beginning. Like you are worthy because you just are. Yeah. You are here. So you are worthy. And I think that what you're saying, this worthiness being attached to our goals or our outcomes, mm-hmm. I think that actually keeps us from resting or playing mm. or or just being. And we're so we're like human doings rather than human beings. Yes, yes. And so that makes so much sense because what I know about women entrepreneurs is they need more rest and they need <laughs> less work. And if you want to make more money, there's actually you have to do you get to do it with more ease, and it's not the hard work. Yes. So I, that goes so hand in hand with what I teach with my clients. That's great. Yes. Yes. I love it. So the self-worth piece is really, it's it, like you said, it's really the self-care and, and the gratitude. And one of the things I, I'm really big on is gratitude. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ah, oh, it's gratitude. Everyone's like, no, gra- seriously. And one of the ways that I worked with my clients recently in the course that I did is that we actually... So we healed our relationship with money. So we took it from like on Facebook, you can change your status and it's it's complicated, right? So I said, no, we're going to be happily married to money. Mm -hmm. And I say, you think about money as a non-physical entity, Mm -hmm. right? It's just money doesn't, it's energy, right? It's just a piece of paper. But the energy behind money Mm -hmm. is that look at money as your friend. And don't look at money as, oh, I didn't have enough or I didn't get to do that or I don't have this... Think about if you look around your house right now, Jen, everything you have has a price on it. Mm -hmm. If money showed up for you for every single thing that you're looking at in your house and your refrigerator, your car, your your friend, like money shows up for us. Money is our friend. And so I one of the techniques that I practiced with my ladies was writing a love letter to money and saying, you know what, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. I got you wrong. You have always been there for me. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you for the desk. I appreciate you for the cell phone, for the grapes in my refrigerator, like (laughs) literally go down the list. And the more you're grateful for what you have, even though it's, you know, one of those cliches. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Thank you for that additional little gem. I mean, you've shared so much already. And I'm thinking about thanking my 599 grapes in the in the fridge right now. So thank you. Like there's just so much. And and I know a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today isn't necessarily like, you know, new stuff that people haven't heard before, but I really want people to listen to what you have to say with a beginner's mindset because even though we've heard this both of us are like we've been in this world, especially if you've been in the personal development world or the spiritual world, but it is really time to show up 
for your business, for yourself. Like you show up for everybody else. It's time to show up for yourself. And you've given us so many gems how to do that today. So thank you for that. Yes, yes. You're welcome. And so I guess if I could leave with anything before we get off the interview, visibility. (laughs) Visibility. One of the things that can help definitely is having a peer group Mm -hmm. that holds you accountable. I'm in a peer group right now and it's amazing. We're all entrepreneurs and we're like, hey, we're going to do this. We're Hey, this month we're all publishing a book. I don't care if it's a 15 minute reader, we're getting a book on Amazon, right? So it's it's whatever you like to have that group and that accountability and people that are going in the same direction as you and that can hold you accountable, whether it's one person or it's a group or it's a coach, definitely get the accountability there. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not disciplined enough to do it yourself or you just don't, you haven't built that muscle, um, definitely create that community around you. And change who you see yourself as, like Mm. literally decide who do I want to become? Who is she? Who is this woman? Name her, give her a name. I named my, the future Jerrica, the future who I want to be, what she embodies is um, there's this goddess in mythology. Her name is Kariz. Mm -hmm. So if you go on Facebook and you find me, Charisma is my middle name. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's where it came from because I said, who do I? Kariz is a a goddess of beauty, of grace. She was just this poised woman that just had this respect and authority. And at the time that I I tapped into that name, I'm like, goddess Kariz, that's that's who I am. That's what I'm finding right now. That's so Um, helpful. (laughs) Yeah. Come up with your your Sasha Fierce, right? Beyonce has <laughs> Sasha Fierce. And even Beyonce did this. <laughs> yes, yes. So find who she is and simulate into that. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't even have to call myself Cariz anymore because I'm Jerrica, the guy. You're there. You're there. Right. Yeah. And, and like with Beyonce, her, one of her albums, she had I am Sasha Fierce. And, she, and when she did interviews, she said, I came up with Tasha Fierce because she was the woman that I wanted to be on stage who was fearless, courageous, you know, swung her hair around and just was just out there and didn't care what anybody thought. And so when I stepped on stage, I became Sasha Fierce. So her album was called I Am Sasha Fierce. Mm. Her album after that was Beyonce. Mm. She didn't need Sasha anymore. She was Sasha. It's like a conduit <laughs> to the next version of yourself. Yes. That's so cool. Hey, yeah. Jerrica, can you tell us how people work with you and can find you? And I know you have a great freebie for us today. So tell us all the things. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you can find me on Facebook. It's Jerrica Charisma Glasper, J-E-R-I-C-A is my first name. And if you see Charisma, that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Jerrica Glasper. And my website is jerricaglasper.com. Uh, you can work with me either one-on-one through private coaching or through some of the group programs that I have coming up. I also has a, have a Facebook group that you can join. And the free gift that I have for everyone today is the, um, I did a, a activate your money attraction program recently, a group program. I'm giving everyone the first module <laughs> for free Ooh. of that, of that program. It's about an hour long, but it talks about clearing your money blocks and how to heal your relationship with money. So what I talked about earlier in the interview Hey, money, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I got it wrong. I grew up thinking this about you and that, that you're evil, that money is the root of all evil. You are not evil. You're my friend. I love you, right? So, all this, that whole thing that you'll get that whole training. That's very generous. Yes, yes. So, let me know what you think. You'll be able to drop some comments below the video, Um, but it's going to be moneymanifestors.com forward slash gift. Okay. Access it there. And I will put the links in the show notes, and I will be reusing this on video. So if if you are listening to this on the podcast and you want to see Jerrica's face because she's gorgeous and glowing and you want to come on and like get her energy visually, you can find this on Facebook and it will also be on YouTube and I will post all of those links. So I just want to say thank you for being so generous. Uh, We are recording this, by the way, everybody, on a Friday night, the week after the American election happened. Like we have had a week and Jerrica still showed up for us. So thank you so much, Jerrica. Thank you so much, Jen, for having me. Such a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. Yes, you as well. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the listeners who are listening. Please be sure to drop your comments below this episode. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, Let us know if you have any questions and be sure to join any community that Jen has to help you grow your visibility (laughs) and your income. (laughs) Well, yes. And I, I really want to say 
If you don't deal with your money mindset blocks and your worthiness blocks, it doesn't matter what kind of strategy you put into place or what kind of tactics you use, or if you put Facebook ads out there, if you don't have this shit, if this foundational shit is not cleared up, everything is much harder. So I, I can't, I can't say enough how much, how important this work is. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So go do the work. All right. Go do the work. (laughs) Thanks everybody. Bye Jerrica. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.